I don't know if the world needs another knitting podcast, to be quite honest with you, but... Oh man, I'm awful. I'm really bad at this. Uh, welcome to episode one of the Therapy by Craft podcast. My name is Eunice Kim of um, Therapy by Craft. I live in Southern California with my husband and my daughter, and I am actually a therapist by trade, which is why Therapy by Craft. Anyway, um, the last couple of years, I've been really enjoying podcasts and watching them and I don't know it's just been really life-giving for me to connect with other like knitters from like around the world um through this wonderful and beautiful craft and lately I've been having this hankering to participate to um I don't know just like partake in the world of knitting and podcasts or what have you I realized oh you know, anyone from the outside world actually like looking in and observing what I'm doing, I'm just like knitting furiously by myself <laughs> in my little knitting chair. And um, it got to the point where I felt like I knew some of these podcasters. Like, I feel like I know Casey from the Young Folk Knits podcast. I feel like I know... Um, like Rebecca from the Crea Bea podcast. I feel like I know um, like Hannah <laughs> from the Hannah G Knits podcast. I feel like I like know these people and the reality is I don't really know them. <laughs> I am a complete stranger to them and they don't know me and I just was starting to feel a bit like a creep. And so as I was sitting there, um, you know, watching these lovely human beings sharing about their craft. I was like, you know, I think I want to reciprocate. <laughs> I think I want to also share with them what I'm going through in my stack and what's on my needles. And um, I don't know, I would be like, you know, incredibly chuffed if those individuals that I just named end up watching my podcast. But um, anyway, I just really felt like participating. And so here I am. Uh, so for for my first episode, I thought that I would share with you the most well-loved knits of our house. And I wanted to include garments that I've made for myself as well as three garments that my daughter really loves. My daughter is three and a half and she is at this age where she is open and interested in what I've been making and she will always ask me is that for me is that for me and I have to tell her no this is not for you so then I started making things for her and she yeah she just really oohs and ahs at the things that she gets to wear that her mommy made and you know she's been a real joy to knit for but she doesn't like everything that I make her and even if she likes it she doesn't wear everything that I make her and so I wanted to pull out and share with you the most well-worn knits of our house and hopefully that'll give you some inspiration as we're going into the tail end of this winter season let's start with what I'm wearing I am wearing the lento sweater um oh god and of course as like a complete new, do people say noob anymore? Anyway, as a complete amateur, I don't have any notes with me. I forget who the designer is, but it was for um, Lina Magazine, and uh, it's the Lento sweater. This is what I um, made to participate in the Let's Lento um, Knit Along, hosted by Rebecca at the Crabea podcast, as well as Amy Palco. And um, I love it. <laughs> this is actually my first time knitting with mohair or a mohair blend. And I thought it was gonna be too itchy, but I just didn't see any way around meeting the gauge uh, for the sweater without holding mohair. So here's what I used. I actually used, um, <laughs> Noro's 
uh, Silk Garden Sock Solo. I used about like two and a half skeins of this. And it is a wool, silk, polymade, and mohair blend. I bought this from my local yarn store, which is Buku Yarns over here in Laverne. And look at how beautiful um, the colors are. It's just, ugh, it's so gorgeous. It gives me like a graffiti vibe. Um, there's some pinks and some blues and yellows. I think this is the, it's colorway one, S1. Um, I know there's an official name for this, but I forget what it's called. Anyway, so I held this double with uh, Hobby's Diablo. It's this. This is color three, which is what? Oof, I don't know. But it's a mohair nylon and acrylic blend. But I held it together with this. I think it's a light gray. But I'm not sure, or a medium gray, maybe. But anyway, so I held these two together in order to meet Gage. And it created this really um, yeah, it just reminds me of graffiti. Like this really colorful, I don't know, like concrete wall that has some like spray paint on it is the feeling that I get. But I really love it. I made some modifications. Um, the original pattern calls for a folded neckband, but I've been really liking the Oh, this higher neckline. And so I kept mine uh, single and I did the called for number of rows um, to achieve, you know, this height. But yeah, I really like it. I obviously want to make another one. It seems like, yeah, you just it's just impossible to make just one. <laughs> so I do have another one that I'm thinking about making and I have this lovely um, tin silk mohair from Sadness Garn um, that I purchased from Wool House in Pasadena. And I'm thinking about pairing this one with ugh, like a repurposed yarn. Um, I don't know what this, I don't even know what the blend is, but you know, maybe holding that together and having just a simple brown, like warm, cozy sweater. But anyway, that's what I'm wearing today. And it is actually, since I've cast off, I love the sweater. <laughs> and I've been wearing it a lot, every chance I get. And in SoCal, we don't have a lot of cold weather. Um, oh, the sun is like going down. I'm losing a lot of sunlight. But anyway, it's not very cold here. The saying goes like you wear short sleeve shirts on Christmas day and like a parka for Easter. I think that's sort of the um, the stereotype of SoCal. I do think that we have more cold days ahead, but um, yeah, I've just been reaching for this sweater a lot. So anyway, this is the Lento sweater from Lina Magazine um, for the Let's Lento Knit Along. Next is this. Beauty. I don't know if you can see it. But this is my Garchal Crew sweater um, by Tennis Fiber Arts. These like stripes were just, I don't know, it just really like called to me. <laughs> this was maybe one of my first garments that I made. And all of this is actually knit flat and seamed together, which is how I'm able to have um, like different stripes that are not like continuous, <laughs> like it doesn't follow the color, um, because it's all paneled and it's knit from the bottom up. And again, it's like knit in pieces and you, you seam it together with a mattress stitch. And I thought I was going to hate it. I really honestly thought, oh no, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but it actually was a great process and pretty enjoyable. It got me really good at knit knitting stockinette flat. It got me really good at mattress stitching. And because I knew that other like top down raglans or even bottom up raglans required this like knitting in the round, you can't achieve this look of having different colors for each panel. I decided to have a different um, order of colors for each panel and only have the same like rounded thing for the cuffs and the hem. Yeah, and I love it. I wear this a lot. Um, yeah, it gets so much wear and it's kind of like my gap sweater. I actually wore this yesterday to work. I used 
um, Green Letter Days Toyland Blanket Kit. Um, Bonnie from the Green Letter Day is amazing at curating different colors together and I each time she releases a new blanket kit I'm blown away at her creativity <laughs> she mostly um, dyes tonals which I love I really like working with tonal yarn and um, yeah I just I usually don't wear a lot of pinks I don't wear a lot of blues the neutral colors are the ones that I usually tend towards but oh my gosh like when I saw the Toyland kit I just I just had to have it <laughs> it was so yeah and it's actually a kit that keeps on giving um, she curates the colors for blankets um, but obviously a garment doesn't use as much yarn um, as a blanket would and so this kit has produced for me so many things. I have this sweater. I have um, a coloring book raglan um, from Amy Sher Makes. And I also have like a cowl that I made. And I still have yarn left over. <laughs> so I'm still thinking about how to use the last bits of this colorway. It's just, it's just really gorgeous. I really love it a lot. Um, I made this a couple years ago, uh, maybe during the beginning of the pandemic. And actually, it hasn't pilled that much. So the quality of the yarn is also really amazing. It's really great. Um, it was a joy to work with and it's lasting me. Yeah, it's lasted like a couple years. Anyway, okay, moving on. This next sweater, I actually did not make it. My friend, um, Samantha from A Needle and Yarn Co, who, oh, who, she actually is the one who gifted this yarn to me, the Diablo that's in here. So thanks, Sam. She also made me this. Oh, isn't it beautiful? This is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. And actually, Sam is the one who introduced me to um, the Petite Knit or Petite Knit. Oh, she's just a really beautiful knitter. She makes a lot of classic gender neutral garments that are great for everyday wear. She's such a generous knitter too. Like she gifts a lot of her knits. And even when I commissioned her to make this, because I was super intimidated by um, this pattern, but I really, really wanted one. So when I commissioned her, I was totally ready to pay her what she is owed <laughs> to make this for me. But she told me that, you know, uh, the designer behind the petite knit does not allow for uh, knitters to sell their finished garments and so she was like you know I'll just make it for you um, for the cost of the yarn and if you um, want to gift like a gift card to Starbucks or something then I'll take that but don't even worry about paying me and I was like what it was so I don't know it was so generous of her but anyway this is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit and it's knit from uh, Cascade 220. This is a non-superwash yarn. Um, and the colorway is, oh gosh, do I have it? Juniper something? Oh gosh, I'm a terrible podcaster. I will have to look up the colorway for this yarn. But it is, gosh, it has some like orangey, red, yellow heathering in there. Ugh, and it's just beautiful. I love it a lot. I um I am a huge fan of autumnal colors. <laughs> like the darker muted, it's like it's muted, but it's also like a darker color of um like orange and yellow and green. Like it's just this is just my jam. And so anyway, I I love this and I, I and I reach for it all the time. Um ugh, it's so squishy and warm and Yes, anyway. So thank you, Sam. Again, this is so well worn and the yarn is actually doing pretty well. There is some pilling, um, but it's nothing that's gonna like prevent me from wearing it. Yeah, it's it's not shabby, it's not too bad. Next up is my Alley sweater. Ah. Um, and this is from Sarah Knits, I think. Oh my gosh, I'm terrible. But I will have, you know, the information available for you, obviously. But this one is, a, this one was a test knit. And 
oh my gosh, it's one of those sweaters that um, is just like oversized, but not too long. I've made it, I don't know, it's not cropped, but I made it to sit like on my hips and um, it's just a really comfortable length for me. Um, but it's also with enough positive ease that I honest, I just so comfortable. I feel like I'm wearing like a blanket. It's so comfortable. And Sarah did an amazing job. I think my favorite thing about this sweater is the neckline. It's a folded neckline. It fits in such a way that um, it covers everything underneath. So this is a sweater I don't have to worry about my like t-shirt peeking through. Like that doesn't happen. This year I'm thinking about making like Taylor from Oh, has this like Frankenstein sweater or this Franken sweater that she's working on where she's piecing together her favorite parts of other um, sweaters and making one sweater to encompass those things. And if I were to make a Franken sweater, this neckline, this is the one that I would use. It's just, yeah, it's just perfect. I love it so much. I will say that the yoke depth is a little too deep for me, but it doesn't stop me from wearing this. I wear this all the time. Um, I really love this detailing here with the contrast color. Um, I have worn this out and have gotten compliments like at the drive-thru. I'm like in the drive-thru getting my food or getting my drink and the person at the window is like, oh my gosh, I love your sweater. And I'm like, thank you so much. I made it. It's one of those moments. I know you know what I'm talking about. It's wonderful. Um, yarn. I made this with Morocco Vintage DK, which is a wool and acrylic blend. And then my contrast color here is a DK um, yarn from Buku Yarns, which again is my local yarn store. Amanda dyed this amazing, like, blue, pink, like, like variegated yarn. It's just so beautiful and has some speckles in it as well. And it just went beautifully um, with this brown color, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I reach for this a lot. I wear this all the time. Oh, I also want to mention, look at how Sarah did the short row shaping in the back. Like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And it's so genius. A lot of times when you make a sweater, the short row shaping is just one of those things that you need to do to shape like a sweater um, so that it fits well. It kind of raises the back a little bit so that it sits, um, so that basically the collar's not going like this, right? But Sarah actually utilized that feature like, to incorporate color work. And I'm like, man, when I saw that, my heart sang. I was, I was, it just brought me so much joy. <laughs> she was making use of this part of a sweater construction that often doesn't really get paid attention to. It's just like this necessary evil. It plays a big role and it is a necessary role, but you know, she just added this design element. I love it so much. It also helps me know what the back of the garment is when I'm trying it on. Anywho, good job, Sarah. It was, it was amazing. Okay, two more. This one, I know it's pretty basic, but it's so good. I was influenced by Rebecca from the Crayabea podcast to make my own Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit. I get the hype, you guys. I get it. Like, it's so comfortable and cozy, and I reach for it all the time. Since I cast off, I think I've been wearing it every other day. Yeah, and it's one of those that I have no discretion at all. Like, I wear it to work, I wear it at home, I wear it to run errands. I think one time I tried to stuff them into, like, overalls because I just didn't want to take them off. It's so comfortable. And this is one <laughs> at work, I think I had a couple of people mention. Like, people at work know that I knit. And so when I wear something, they'll ask me, oh, did you make that? This one, they did not ask me, oh, did you make that? This one, they assumed I bought it at the store. <laughs> they just thought like, oh, she must have purchased that one. Um, so comfy and so cozy. The yarn, oh yes, I used um, the Ranger Merino DK yarn by Echo View Fiber uh, Mill. And it's 
unfortunately discontinued. Um, they went out of business and during their closing sale, I just purchased a bunch because um, their colors were so beautiful and I'm so, I'm, I'm so sad each time that I use this and I have and I'm currently um, working with another colorway from them but whenever I use it it just makes me so sad it makes my heart ache <laughs> that they're no longer in business I wish I had known about them sooner I wish I could have supported them sooner I don't know it just it's it's a wonderful yarn. Um, I've been wearing it a lot, and so far it hasn't pilled well, a little bit, but it's it's not too noticeable. The the little pilling, um, the colors are beautiful. It doesn't like I have no fatigue on my wrists when I'm knitting with this yarn, and really, yeah, I just wish they were around so that I can support them more. So yes, if you have a small yarn business that you really like, support them. Ah, that's my lesson. Or that's, I guess, hopefully everybody's lesson. With this yarn, it's just so good. The colorway is Chickadee. No, it's not. It's Kinglet. And then my last garment is this one. It's actually a cardigan. This was a test knit that I did for Ozetta. Um, I made this with Simply Wool and Worsted Weight in the colorway Winnie. And yeah, I, I wear this one all the time. It's a really great like work cardigan. I put it on over, it's like slightly cropped, not totally, but just a little bit. Uh, so I can wear it over my long light like, t-shirt dresses to work, slacks. It's a nice neutral color um, that goes well with pretty much anything I would wear for work. And yeah, there is some pilling. I don't know if you can see, there is some pilling here, but it's a really nice bouncy yarn. It's it's held its shape, which I really appreciate. Beautiful balloon sleeves. Um, oh my gosh, and these buttons might be my favorite part of it. It's these like shelled, what is this? I don't know, like mother of pearl maybe? Um, buttons that I picked up from Buku Yarns. The one thing that I don't like about this cardigan, but it's really my own fault, really, is that I bound off, like, the Italian bind off. I don't know if you can see, but I did it too tight. <laughs> this was when I was just starting to, I guess, um, like, use it more. And I don't know why I thought it'd be a good idea to, like, pull that thing so hard because you know um, if you've ever done the Italian bind off before it's sewn bind off the recommended like tail to leave is about three or four times um, the length that you need to bind off and so I would measure out about four times or three times the length of the area that I need to bind off and I would always have so much left over and I'm like why do they recommend this as it turns out it's because I was doing it too tight. Um, ugh. So that's the one thing about this cardigan that maybe I'll go back and fix. Because I love the cardigan itself so much. But yeah, I just wish that. Yeah, I just wish that I hadn't made that mistake of binding off too tightly. But otherwise, those are my um, five and, and now six um, most reached for garments of this past year and I or actually of all time really I haven't been um, knitting garments for very long but ugh, those get worn all the time okay now moving on to my child and the knits that she wears a lot um okay the first is this cute it's the olive vest olives vest by knitting for olive I made this in pearl Soho's good wool uh, in the color olive oil and the yarn choice was 100% influenced by Hannah <laughs> from Hannah G knits and if you don't follow her go do that now um, but if you do follow Hannah you know that she has a very open love affair <laughs> with Pearl Soho's Goodwill, um, or Pearl Soho yarn in general, but Goodwill in particular. Like she, yeah, she she speaks so highly of this yarn that I had to get some, and she ain't wrong, you guys. 
she ain't wrong. This is a great yarn. It's super soft. She wears this so much. Everybody at her daycare also knows. Um, like, oh, Sam, I love your vest. And Sam will say, oh, my mama made it for me. And uh, it brings such joy to my heart. This has some pilling, I will say. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Ooh, you can see any of the pills here. Um, but honestly, I don't even care. <laughs> She runs around and I think she naps in it and so the days where she wears this to daycare She's wearing it all day. Oh the one modification I made is I made it longer uh, When I initially made it I think the the um, Hem ended here like the length of it ended here right where my new hem starts But I noticed that it's wide enough that I think she can wear it for another couple seasons but the length was like right on the money and I wanted her to be able to have more wear out of it and so everything else is the same everything is knit to I think the 4t size or the two three ugh, I don't know ugh, I'll be more specific next time um but I just lengthened it lengthened it by maybe two inches or so an inch and a half and now it's perfect secondly is this ah when Petite Knit came out with the zipper sweater um, for for the children's size. I, I knew I had to make it. Um, as you saw before, I love the one that Sam made for me. Oh, incidentally, Sam is also the name of my daughter. So Sam, my friend, and then Sam, my daughter. Uh, but yeah, when Sam made um, the zipper sweater for me and seeing how much wear I got out of it, there was a day Sam, my daughter, looked at me and was like, oh, I wish I had one. I wish I had a sweater like that, mom. Yeah, I can do that for you. <laughs> I can make that for you. And she got really excited and she was very clear. She's like, mom, I want the sweater where the zipper only goes halfway. I don't want the one that's all the way, okay? I just want the one that's halfway. And I said, okay, I got you, I got you. I'll make one for you. So that day, I of course went and purchased the petite knit pattern and looked and rummaged through my stash and ugh, I just, and she wears this a lot. I think this was the first thing that I've made that my husband saw on my daughter and pulled out his phone to take photos. He was like, I need to brag about this. This is by far my favorite thing that you've made <laughs> and I need to brag about it and so it was it was really sweet actually like he took some pictures of Sam on his phone and he sent them to his family and was like look at what Eunice made and it was just really sweet it was a very proud moment for me anyway um yeah this is made with Oof, what did I hold double? Ah, I, 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 I rummaged through my stash. It's a Zen Yarn Garden um, sock yarn. Uh, I know that it's like super wash merino. I needed it to be super wash so I could throw it into the washing machine without worrying about it. Uh, oh, what is the colorway? I forget the name, but I love it. It's like speckled. It has these purple and I don't know. It's beautiful. I didn't even alternate the skeins. I just one to the next one and there's no striping you can't even tell like I think it was just so well made and well dyed uh, I held that double with like a loops and threads something and it's a yarn that I purchased from Michaels a hundred years ago so I held the um, lace weight or it's like a really light fingering weight with the fingering um, yarn from Zen yarn garden. Oh gosh, I'm butchering it. And it was fine. The gauge was perfect and yeah. The zipper I got from an Etsy store. Um it's YKK. It's like YKK zippers. Um but I'll 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 put that information down below as well. But yes, this is another one of those like oh my goodness. Since I cast it on, she's worn she's worn this every week every single week and it's only because it gets so dirty <laughs> and I have to like set it aside that she doesn't wear it every single day but yes and then last but not least is the skift sweater I forget the designer I think the designer's name is Jessica but I forget 
her handle. Ugh. But it's a color work yoke, circular yoke, top down sweater. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Like when I saw this, I just knew. And it was such a quick knit too. It's made in DK weight. And I actually made mine in a cotton blend yarn. I think it's Burnett Softy Cotton. I think I need to make this again um, in a different, like in a wool. Um, the drape is great, but it's really, it's quite heavy. And since she's worn this so many times, it's gotten a little bit stiff. I also think that because I used a cotton yarn, the collar was like quite wide and it didn't sit on her the way that um, maybe it ought to have if I had used a yarn that had some wool in it. So what I ended up doing um, is I initially made it and then I, I think I like cut the neckband off <laughs> and redid the neckband. And I added, I don't know if you can see, but I added some increases or decreases. Oh, how did I do this? I don't even remember. But you can see that there's some decreases and increases in the collar here in order to bring that neckline up a little bit. But yeah, I love this one. And I'm definitely going to be making another one of these. Um, she's almost grown out of this. And um, yeah, the next one will definitely be made in a wool blend of sorts. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I was going to share some whips. Do I have time to do that? Oh, it's like getting kind of long. I'll share two whips with you just so that the next episode that I do will have um, like some kind of continuity. Um, I this year have been really trying to cut down on one test knitting because I think 2020, 2021, no, 2021 and 2022, I was test knitting like crazy. I think at some point I had like seven tests going <laughs> at one time, um, or I was participating in like seven tests at once, and it initially gave me so much joy, but after a while, like towards the end of last year, I was over it, and I, I vowed this year to not participate in as many tests, but... Haley from Mosetta, she went and designed this thing that I just couldn't, I just couldn't say no to. I could not not test it. It is the Seaway Pullover. Ta-da! And I don't know if you can see. Ah, that's a little better. Do you see that? It is an all-over cable knit sweater. It's top down um, with, what is it? Drop shoulder, huh, that's what it is. Yes, with drop shoulder construction with these amazingly like thick hems, ribbed hems, and uh, it's just so good. <clears throat> I have been enjoying this knit so much. I've been enjoying this test so much. I can't wait until it's off my needles and until it joins my pile of, yeah, really loved knits. Um, this is also made with Echo View Fiber Mill yarn. It's the same base, the um, Ranger Merino DK. This is in the colorway Chickadee. Um, I think I got confused earlier, but it is a three-ply, um, non-superwash, um, merino yarn, and it's, it has, I don't know if you can tell, but it actually has some blue in here. Maybe, maybe you can't really tell, but it's slightly variegated. It's heathered and, um, yeah, like slightly variegated, so it almost looks like stonewashed. I don't know, but it's gorgeous. There's just enough variegation to have some interest, right, for it to catch your eye, but not so much that it loses its tonal effect. Like, it's definitely um, not a variegated yarn. Um, but yeah, just again, sadness for the fact that they're not, you know, around anymore. But anywho, I am very close to finishing. I'm at just this 
like I have a couple of repeats of the cables to go before I do a nice chunky ribbed bottom hem and yeah I'll share more about sizing and my decision for how I ended up doing this size instead of the, the my usual size maybe in a later episode um also I probably will have to go back and do the neckline again um for whatever reason maybe it's the yarn I don't know it's just not sitting the way that I would like it to it's not sitting nicely on my collar so after I finish the body I probably will have to well I'm gonna block and see how it is and then maybe go back and redo it I don't know yet it'll depend on how it blocks but I'm super excited about this. I'm hopeful that the next time I sit and talk with you guys, this will be done. And I can show you how beautifully, mm, just how beautiful it is. It's, it's so good. Um, I think the pattern is releasing sometime in March, so keep an eye out on that. Last but not least, brownstone beanie. Oops, I don't want to lose stitches. Look, isn't that pretty? Ha ha ha. So this is the brownstone beanie. The designer's name is Tori Yu. She released this um, beanie pattern recently and it just looked, I don't know, it just seemed like it would be a really um, like well reached for addition to my wardrobe. I don't have a lot of hats. I don't have a lot of beanies. I had one crochet beanie that I've lost. I don't know where it is and now that the weather is a little bit colder I, I found myself really in need of a beanie um, and so yeah I am using this beautiful like variegated slash speckled colorway from LL Yarn Co. Aha, ball band. LL Yarn Co. in um, their LL Sock uh, base. It is 80% superwash merino and it has a little bit of nylon, 20% uh, nylon, and it's in the colorway, damn that's bright, Pasadena 22. This was in um, SoCal Stitches, SoCal, I think, in Pasadena this past year. Um, ugh, and when I saw this, I was like, I really need to get it. I wanted some kind of souvenir yarn from my very first Stitches event, and... Yeah, I think this was a good pick. Um, later on in March, we're going to be going sledding in the mountains um, nearby here. And so I will hopefully have a brand new beanie to um, take with me to the mountains. And yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're still here and sticking around, thank you. If you are interested in seeing more, I think the best way that you can communicate to me that you like it um, is to like the video and maybe subscribe. I don't know. Mwah, mwah. I hate like that. Mwah, don't forget to subscribe. I feel super like phony <laughs> saying that. But if you do like it, the best way to communicate with me to like, Eunice, you should do this again, is um, to hit like, maybe subscribe so that if I do another episode, um, you'll get notified of that. But yeah, thanks again. Um, I appreciate you being here and...